Namibia has seen a surge in cases of human-wildlife conflict involving elephants, buffalo and other species, mainly in the northern and northeastern parts of the country. It's against this background that the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism launched the Integrated Human-Wildlife Conflict and Wildlife Crime Management Project. Now, to talk to us about this this evening, about this initiative, I'm joined by the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, Honorable Pohamba Shifeta. Minister Shifeta, thank you so much for joining us this evening and welcome to the Daily Roundup. Thank you for having me here. Now, the ever-increasing cases of human-wildlife conflict are uh, undoubtedly affecting our environment and various communities' uh, livelihoods. What are some of the challenges that, you know, comes along with this? Yes, um, as you know that... Um because of um, our measures that we've um, taken um, uh, five years ago to ensure that our wildlife is protected and uh, we battle with the, those uh, poachers and uh, we have also decided to ensure that uh, we investigate the syndicates, the whole um, you know, intricacies of um, mm -hmm. This indicates operating in Namibia, especially committing in the commission of wildlife crimes. So we have um, unfolded that and uh, we have decided to make sure that uh, poaching has gone down. Mm -hmm. There's a re complete reduction in poaching, especially our elephants and uh, rhinos. So now that means it created some another imbalance especially in elephants, because elephants for now do not have enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, they are thriving. The population is, has grown to the extent that we have uh, so many elephants in the country, then our capacity, the carrying capacity in, in Namibia, mm -hmm. especially in uh, those elephants, elephants that are roaming, Mm -hmm. um, in a conservancies or in any areas that are not yet declared as conservancies. Mm -hmm. Now, we, that is now a challenge. In, in the, that causes now human wildlife conflict. And also, uh, you look at um, on our rivers there. To our rivers, we have um, crocodiles and hippos that are also causing, uh, you know, human wildlife conflict. Mm -hmm. there. And they become source of that uh, human wildlife conflict. So, and, and also our buffaloes and the, all these are causing, and the lions, the population of these animals has mm -hmm. grown now yeah. because of our measures to protect these animals. So that is the challenge we have now. We are facing that challenge. Yeah. The challenge of um, poaching and the wildlife trafficking or pro trading, uh, well, illegally trading wildlife um, uh, products is yeah. no longer uh, much an issue now. We have put that under control, but there is emerging uh, a challenge now that is the wildlife, um, human wildlife conflict. Yeah, as much as you've mentioned now that illegal poaching is, is, is at an all time low, you've managed to get that situation under control just for the sake of context. When it comes to wildlife trafficking and trade, um, which is also you know one of the problems that were you know an issue and experience in Namibia, talk to us about what were some of the most common species that were falling prey um, to this act and what wildlife products uh, were on demand on the you know international black market. Yeah, this. Wildlife products um, like uh, elephant ivory, rhino horns, pangolin scales, uh, bones of lions, they, they are in demand in other countries. Mm -hmm. That's why the poaching incidents, especially in countries where we have those our range states, we have experienced that. Of course, Namibia now, we, we have at least managed to put that under arrest. So, that those are the most animals that are more trafficked and the poached in, in, in Namibia. And and also does you know illegal wildlife trade have an impact, a direct impact on the Namibian economy? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that's why we have uh, some measures now. We have um, through our intelligent work, we, we have um, uh, identified different syndicates in the, uh, operating in Namibia in outside Namibia, who have connection in, in this. That's why, because of that, we, it, we managed to um, break that 
up and the uh, arrest has been always uh, made even mm -hmm. before the act has been made. Yeah. That means before uh, poaching. So we, we have a very clear network how to and we manage to do much of this work through our network. Community networks, we, we work with communities. Much of our work in under poaching it's a more assistance from the support from communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why some countries or neighboring countries and other countries from other even um, international visitors uh, from other countries, they come and learn here how we do um, organize our poaching mm -hmm, activity mm -hmm. and supporting activities. The ministry uh, launched the Integrated Human Wildlife Conflict and Wildlife Crisis Management Project. Uh, briefly talk to us uh, about this and also what it is that you, you hope to achieve. Yeah, this project is um, as a result of uh, what we have um, discovered um, through our research. Yeah. Um, we, we have now put poaching incidences, uh, reduced that those poaching incidences and we put everything under arrest except in some incidences. Uh, now that that has happened, so of course the population of um, wild animals um, are thriving. So we have now to combine the two so that we don't only put um, emphasis on under poaching activities but also to ensure that um, we have to give relief to communities especially in hot spots where um, wild, human wildlife conflicts are happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in effect, it's a, com a combined uh, project. The com all, the com some of the communities, excuse me, Minister, that, that stay in these areas that are affected by human wildlife conflict says that the funds given to them in order to compensate, you know, due to the loss of their livestock is not sufficient. So th does this project also address this specific issue? Yeah, that, that project addresses different issues, I mean, specific issues, uh, including that. And, and uh, w of course, we are not compensating. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to come up with sustainable projects. Uh, compensation will not be sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you have mm -hmm. to compensate each and every incident of uh, human wildlife conflict, mm -hmm. you, you, it will entail in two billion. And it's not pro uh, predictable because um, otherwise, you have to take insurance for that. Yeah. Now, what we are trying to do now is to allow those communities, like in this project, we, we will have some economic programs to have um, even there will be a, a kind of a, a small enterprise project that mm -hmm. will then assist uh, those small enterprises, mm -hmm. a, a kind of a, a grant facilities All right. for small scale, at the small scale, so for in those communities. Then we also have some other programs. And this is now to derive benefit from wildlife uh, 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 um, programs mm -hmm. in those communities. Because now we have also issues now, um, those communities, they used to benefit from conservation hunting, what we mm -hmm. call trophy hunting. But uh, looking at what is happening now in the world, many countries have um, decided to put some laws to ban imports of um, trophy hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so it, it will be a problem. Mm -hmm. So that means that if trophy hunting material products will not be imported in those countries or exported anyway, so um, that means we'll have a problem to do that internationally. So yeah. that's why we come up with a, now others programs that um, will benefit, will still continue to benefit those, con those uh, communities who live with those animals because they have to coexist. And to allow them to coexist, you need, need to have them coexisting with those animals. You have to allow yeah. them to benefit from that, uh, to, to be able to coexist. So there must be some economic benefits. Yeah, to those yeah. communities. Just lastly, in, in which regions will this project be rolled out and, and when? So it's a north central, um, that is now area, area including um, Etosha National Park. Uh, that's north and central. North central includes uh, Oshiranjupa, going to some areas of uh, Kavango and so on. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, some in the northwest, that is Kunene, in especially focusing on some of the conservancies. There are mm -hmm. some big conservancies there, at Tandeka and uh, 
or battery and some other conservancies mm -hmm. there. And also some areas there. And then also uh, northeast. That includes uh, Babata National Park and the surroundings. All areas that are northeast, northwest, and north central, mm -hmm. in the surrounding too. So those are the areas that we are a hot spot, especially when it comes to human wildlife conflict. Yeah. Whether they are commercial farmers or the communal farmers or those in the conservancies, sometimes animals now, because they are it's overflow, because the population has grown, that to the extent that some animals have to look for new territories mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. they have to go and that's the way the conflict starts. Some, because of a lack of food or water, they have to go and search for that um, outside and then they and then get into communities where um, in, in clash with communities. Yeah. So that is why this uh, problem of uh, human wild conflict is exacerbated by the growth, that population that is population now of wild animals, yeah. especially the elephants, has uh, surpassed the carrying capacity. Yeah. You mentioned that, media, yeah. So. You, you didn't mention, though, when the rollout of the project Yeah, it begin. is a seven-year, I mean, six-year um, project. Mm -hmm. uh, it is start this year mm -hmm. uh, already. So we have already, we are now at the stage of uh, making sure that it's implemented. Okay. Uh, we, we, it is funded by the Global Environmental Facility um, through UNDP, that's a UN agency, uh, and uh, we are implementing as a ministry. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. That was uh, Honorable Minister Pohamba.